Hey everyone, this is Matt with We Can Do Better. Welcome to the show today. We are joined today by two special guests, Josephine Wong and Dan Zook, all the way from Hong Kong, though today they are here in Atlanta with me. Welcome Dan, welcome Joe. Hey. Hi, happy to be here. We are gonna talk today about your journey from UX research and design into what you're calling Make Meaningful Work. So let's start off the, the show today just real quickly. You guys give quick introductions, tell us about your background and what Make Meaningful Work means to you. Hi, I'm Joe. I've been a user researcher for the past over 20 years and we're here for the user research Atlanta. Hi, I'm Dan. I've been in this field that's gone by various names for the last 25 years years and I've been living in Hong Kong for 21 years and recently the last six years have been focusing on Make Meaningful Work. And what is Make Meaningful Work? If you want to describe it to our listeners and viewers who maybe never heard of it before. Make Meaningful Work is all about a healthy team culture. It's about understand me which is yourself and understand we which is your team and mine's a little longer but i'd say make meaningful works about rehumanizing the workplace it's about equipping the individual and the team with practices for inserting meaning into and strengthening and deepening healthy relationships between people it's about encouraging healthy behaviors as well and an ultimate it's about creating a sustainable culture to foster conditions that support practices like trust respect support and care and to ultimately reduce tangible and intangible waste at work. Really Make Meaningful Work's about creating a community of practice to help people move along from a spectrum of sleepwalking to sparkle to indeed make meaningful work. Very cool. So for yourselves, can you talk a little bit about the, your experiences and why you've transitioned from kind of core UX to make meaningful work? What's led you to this new evolution in your careers? So about six years ago, we have some kind of review about what we've been doing throughout our work. A lot of our project works, we might feel very good about what we've done to the project. But if you look or widen the picture a bit, a bit more, the, the whole project, um, the value to the customers or um, how the team works together, are they stressed, uh, how healthy the culture is in the team? A lot of them are not that satisfied. So we started to do some reflections and stock take our project a little bit and started to do more research and look into this problem. We certainly did all of that. And um, I, I think for me, primarily transitioning was about uh, continuous learning. So I felt within uh, user experience and all of the other related disciplines that go into that, I felt like uh, we both wanted to broaden our horizons. And as Joe said, uh, in stock taking uh, the projects across many domains and industries that we'd worked in, and we had discovered certain patterns in those projects. And so we just decided to think about well, what would be a very difficult, somewhat audacious question to try and answer together that would uh, give us more learning uh, over time. Uh, Make Meaningful Work didn't just emerge. It probably took a good two to three years before we even discovered that question. In researching with other people, we've understood that to be, uh, continue to be a very interesting question to continue to research. And what it's led to is it's certainly been part of the transition and it's certainly led to uh, learning and continuous learning in that. So it's worked out it's working out to be very, very good. So talk about, if you don't mind, some of the changes maybe you've seen in yourselves or your clients or your partners now that you've been applying Make Meaningful Work to your, your core deliverables and your core practice. So we have been talking about the practices that we've um, been working on. They mentioned a few like um, trust, um, respect, and that type of practices. When you pay more attention to these words, we've been talking about it's attention turned into words and then turn into actions. And then you look at what impact that you can make. All these implicit practices that we've seen um, in different teams and different people, it's not uh, structured in a way and people not paying attention in a way. So we're trying to bring these implicit practices um, more intentional when, when people see 
things and how they behave. So we call it practice spotting. So I, I pay more attention to what I do and, and what other people do. And we also have a way to practice that. So you can um, continue this journey throughout your life. I think I heard the key word in there was change. Change is a word that gets used pretty generously uh, in business today. And I think this is probably also going to sound pretty cliche, but uh, change is hard. Uh, and it is indeed hard. So I personally, and, and I think Joe as well, we, we prefer not to use the word change that much. I certainly don't focus on it. I think it touches more on the answer from uh, the previous question, which is to do with, with learning. And so if indeed uh, an integral part of Make Meaningful Work is creating spaces to learn, it means that you need to think about what that would look and feel like. And what we've discovered at work is we sort of draw it as a heart. And we talk a lot, uh, Joe and myself talk a lot about the, the brain, the heart and the body in terms of embodied practice. But if we look at the heart, we sort of divide it into two parts as it pertains to work. Uh, one half is uh, what we call the transactional, the delivery part of work. And that's the very common way that people think about projects and work. And the second half is what we call uh, the meaning uh, the meaning part. Now, both are important, but obviously we're trying to stress practices that derive meaning, hence make meaning for work. It needs to happen is within a space of learning, you actually need to stop and reflect. And what we've seen is people don't really do that in explicit ways. If you can stop and think about how you're working, how you're interacting with people, collect stories, do practice spotting as Joe's been discussing and use that as a way to actually document, practically document practices and make that a way to codify the meaning in the work, then what you're actually doing is you're promoting more of the meaning side of the heart, which gets you to both deeply reflect and also learn and practice together. And that's a cycle that really doesn't happen at work as much as it should be. It tends to happen in sort of dark corners or if people go to training or if people go to retreats. But I think one of our primary aims with Make Meaningful Work is to make sure that continuous reflection learning and codification is, is indeed happening more often. So since we've been doing this with um, different teams, I also see that one of the things we kept trying to encourage people to do is understanding yourself and understanding the team. So by understanding yourself and the team better, you can see the work um, together much better. Mm, that's true. Do you have any advice for other people either in UX or not in UX who kind of kind of embark on this journey to transition from one career to another. Any advice that you've learned along the way that you could share with everyone else? Make meaningful work. So our tools and our framework um, is helpful for not just transitioning to um, another career. Um, it's, it's helping current team as well. But if you specifically talk about um, transitioning, I would say understand yourself is almost the most important thing and understand yourself in a very deep way i'm not talking about you know what color do you like what food do you mm -hmm. like but rather all these um you know values and beliefs and what are you trying to achieve for yourself and in a way that not superficially like those business articles talking about mm. and reflection is a big tool or big way to do it, I think. Mm. Yeah, I, it gets me thinking about when, when Joe was talking and also um, your question. I actually think of, of Joe and, and you, Matt, um, as examples. I think that the idea is that we, we talk about it like it's a, it's a hub and, and the hub means it's, me, it's meant to describe a, a small community of people that are inside that hub. And that can start with a very, very, small number of people but what you're going for in that hub is you're going for a for lack of a better word a diversity of thinking and backgrounds and disciplines and anything that creates a lovely mix of thinking inside that little hub which can form a 
can form a community. And the nice thing about community is that you get support where you need it to supplement what you don't have. And if you can get that support, and, and, and sometimes that's described as more, you know, more recently coaching and mentoring. If you can get that support, especially Joe talks a lot about, we've created a journal whereby it's very important to have to do that learning as a pair. And so I, I, like when I think of the conversations that we have, so that's Dan and Matt, that might be, some of that might be the same or it might be different to the conversations that I'll have with Joe. But what's explicit or implicit in that is the professional development, is the learning that goes on. Now, uh, Joe and myself are actually very uh, lucky in that we do that every day. She'll send me articles, I'll send her articles, we'll tackle a question that we're not sure about. And we are constantly learning together as a pair. And so I would, I guess the answer then becomes, or one answer becomes, if you're looking to develop professionally, find some buddies and find buddies that come from different backgrounds and learn, uh, learn together. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thanks. And that'll wrap us up for today. Thank you both for joining me and Thank sitting two, week, two feet from me and <laughs> pretending we're in a different room when we're not. <laughs> and uh, that's it. We'll see everyone next time. And we're going to go hang out on the porch. <laughs> Bye, all. Bye. All right, good show, people, good show.